In friendships, there are always arguments. Sometimes they're about little things. Sometimes they could be about big things. Ella, look, this is a story time on how me and my friends got into a two year long civil war. You are forever done, bro. You're forever done. I thought this was my hood. Yo, get the fuck out my shit, yo. Now look, that clip that you just saw, this was nearing the end of the civil war. So before this even gets explained, we have to go time travel all the way to the beginning of the civil war. Now, this civil war started all because of this emotion right here. Now, obviously, this is anger. So, the two friends I got in this war with are Leo and Alex. That's where we're going to call them. We were basically having an argument saying that none of us can make each other mad on purpose. And we're all disagreeing. I'm telling Leo and Alex, I'm like, bro, I could really violate y'all anytime I want. Leo and Alex are like, no, but I could violate you. It's basically just us arguing back and forth. So, instead of going back and forth, we decided to give each other the green light to do anything we want. If it's really true that none of us can make each other angry, why don't we put it to the test now giving a man a green light to do anything to make you angry is one of the worst possible things you could do so look from here on out there was just little things happening like just assault here and there pushing each other into teachers public embarrassment just little things like that but nobody was really getting affected too much now once women got brought into the mix of things everything changed now there are three events that happened to us first leo got taken off of the map for leo's major event me and Alex double teamed him and took him off. And then after that happened, it was time for Alex to get going. But Leo, he was already done. He conceded. But this was all my doing. But then Alex came back and nuked me. He, he nuked me. So let's get into what happened to Leo first. So Leo was dating this girl, okay? And man, this girl is just as friendly as friendly can get. But she's not friendly with random people. She's friendly with people that she knows. So look, man, I wasn't there when this happened. But Leo and Alex went on a two-man. And during this two-man, Leo's girlfriend started bugging. She was smacking on Alex's ass and shit. Now look, Leo wasn't in the room when this happened. So Leo's girlfriend smacks Alex's ass a couple more times. And then Alex picks her up, puts her on his shoulder, and just starts smacking her ass. Now look, chat, this is all on recording. So once this happened... Y'all already know, we're in the Civil War. So every time I see Leo in school, I'll tell him, yo, bro, look at this TikTok. And it would just be a video of his girlfriend getting her ass smacked. Now look, Alex didn't even do this for the purpose of the Civil War. Alex just did this shit to do this shit. But look, Alex was also messing with this girl who was on the two-man, and she was the one who recorded. And the girl Alex is messing with is Leo's girlfriend's cousin. So the girl Alex was messing with didn't see anything wrong with it. Leo's girlfriend didn't see anything wrong with it. But obviously, as guys, we're like, bro, what the hell? You got a man and you just let your man's friend smack your ass while he had you up on his shoulder. But look, Leo did not break up with this girl, okay? He played it calm. But what Leo wanted to do was to test this girl's loyalty. Because he was messing with this girl, alright? So he wanted to see if this was really just a genuine, innocent thing. Or she really wanted to get taken down to... You feel me? And man, this was his biggest mistake. Look, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the actual loyalty test. Because that could be a whole story in itself. So let me know if y'all want that. But to speed things up a little bit, we're just going to skip to the end of the loyalty test. So Leo's girl ended up finding out that Leo told Alex to test her loyalty. And she's pissed. Y'all already know how this goes, man. We're going to have to do a part two. I'm about to post the entire story on YouTube now, though. So if you want to watch this without going through all the parts, just go to my YouTube link in bio. This is part two of the two year long civil war I got into with my friend. So on the last part, we left off at Leo's girlfriend finding out about the loyalty test. So she's mad as hell at Leo. She is completely cool off of him. Wants nothing to do with him. So me and Alex, we tell Leo, we're like, yeah, like we going to get this fixed. You know, we got you. So we create a group call with Leo alex the girl and me now look this is war and in war anything goes and this is the first major shot of the civil war his relationship was already messed up but after this group call it was destroyed beyond recovery so besides this loyalty test there was another thing that happened okay my guy leo was at a new year's party all right and at this new year's party there was some girl that was on his body now that that's clear we can actually talk about the plays that we went through to get this going so we're playing it regular we're trying to make it seem like we're really trying to help so we're just like yo leo you know as a man you gotta just own up to what you did you know tell her everything so leo's like yeah i know i was wrong for doing that loyalty test i'm sorry uh, uh. you know he's just being very remorseful okay and then i hit my guy leo with a well, are you going to apologize for... I said the name of the girl from the New Year's party. So Leo's girl was like, who is that? And I'm like, Leo, I think it's time for you to come clean, man. You know, the lies got to end here. And Leo is dead silent. He is not saying a word. So I'm like, all right, bro, I guess I'm going to just have to tell her for you. So then I explained to her what happened. Now she gets set off the edge. 
Now look, he didn't even really cheat on her for real. I just guessed it and manipulated the situation to make it seem like it was way worse than what it was. So while I'm making it seem worse than what it was, Alex is in the background instigating. He's like, damn, Leo, like, I can't believe you would cheat on her and then do a loyalty test on her. Like, that's crazy. Now Leo is losing his damn mom. He's like, yo, I know what you guys are trying to do. But this feeling is so weird. I can't explain this. He just fried bro's whole relationship. Now look, keep in mind, we're all still friends to this day. But any normal person is going to hear this and think, well, y'all are actually so grimy. But before the war even started, we gave each other the green light. Anything goes. No limitations at all. But after this... Leo wanted no more part in this. So me and Alex are celebrating our victory, man. We're clowning on Leo, and we're just, you know, we're bathing in our victory juice, you feel me? But this was really short-lived, because we both knew since Leo was gone, this was no longer a three-way war, bro. This was just a duel to the death. But now we get into phase two, man. So one thing I did not tell you guys about Alex is that Alex is actually a, a, a dickhead. Like, really, like a dickhead all the way. He plays women. He, he does not care about women at all. But this wasn't going to stop me from playing my cards right and using women to get this guy angry. He claims that anything I did with a woman would not get him angry. But I was going to show him something special. So fast forward a little bit. All right? I said all the plays in motion. A girl posted a video of Alex choking her. You know, on some playful shit like grabbing the neck. You know what I'm saying? Just like a little stupid shit. So I grabbed this video and I get a frame of Alex's girlfriend sucking his meat. So look, Alex is an idiot, all right? My guy Alex be recording stuff and he'll just randomly start screen sharing while we're on FaceTime. So he's screen sharing him and this girl. So I'm on IQ timing. I pretend like I don't see anything. And he say, yo, bro, look at the screen share. Whole time I'm already on the screen share. But I tell him to restart it because the screen share is black. So he restarts it and then I take a picture of a specific frame, all right? So we're starting to get around to that three minutes and 30 second range. So just know every time it gets to that range, there will be another part, all right? Once again, if you don't want to go through all the parts, just go to my YouTube. This whole thing will be posted there. Part three of the Civil War, all right? But look, it's only us two, so let me change the picture. This is better. So in the last part, I talked about all the evidence that I grabbed against this guy, okay? And I call up his girl. So I call her up. I'm like, yeah, I got to tell you something about Alex. You know, as his friend, I feel like I shouldn't tell you. But you know, what he's doing just isn't right, you know? And you don't deserve this, you know? You deserve better. So I show her the video of him choking that girl on her story. And I'm like, yeah, he messing with other girls, doing this shit. And this is not even the only girl. But I don't got proof of the other stuff. Now I tell her, I'm like, yeah, he's also going around showing people this video of you. I'm like, I think this is you. I can't really see you that well. Because it was in a dark car, all right? So now I show her the screenshot. And she's like, yeah, that is me. So she's pissed. She's mad as hell. She's like, I want those videos gone and I'm done with him. But she realizes he's not going to just delete them if she tells him to. So she comes up with this elaborate plan. She's going to link him and then she's going to get into his phone and then delete it like that. Now she's talking about smashing the phone after and all that. Like she's pissed. So, ah, oh man, bro, I'm so happy. I'm like, bro, we're about to do it. I'm about to take this guy off the map. So fast forward to the next day, all right? She goes and she links him and her cousin is with her, all right? Because she didn't want to be there alone, I guess. So she just made up some excuse saying that her cousin had to be there with her uh whatever he didn't really care though so they went to the mall now there was no actual way they could have gotten into his phone without the password i don't have the password and when she asked he wouldn't give her the password so they're just like all right we got to just confront this guy so she's like yeah i know you recorded me i want it out of your phone so keep in mind all right so during this entire ordeal she kept me on the phone. So I was on FaceTime with her during this entire thing so I could watch it go down. And he knows I'm on the phone. So now he knows exactly what's going on. I orchestrated this and I got him right where I wanted him. But he doesn't want to give me the satisfaction. So he just starts laughing. And he's like, no. He starts spanking a troll at the situation. Look, now I'm low-key getting mad because it's like, damn, this is kind of failing. No phones are being smashed. Nothing is really going on. But her cousin clutched. I'm not going to lie. Her cousin was nonstop talking. Her cousin was like, yeah, we're going to call the cops on you. Ah, ah. She was just seeing so much. I kid you not. There was not a single moment during the situation where she wasn't speaking. So she was really getting under this guy's skin. And that's all I wanted. Because he's one of them guys that's trying to be nonchalant. So I want him to get out of character. Soon as I heard him get to yelling, something in my body was fulfilled. Pause. He's getting mad as hell. He's like, yo, just take me home. Just take me home. So now they hop on the highway. Then while they on the highway, they pull onto the shoulder. So now they're trying to brainstorm ways to leave this guy on the highway. But look, he is not getting out the car. Because if he gets out the car, it's over. 
So they're just there for mad long. So eventually he's just telling her like, yeah, like you're crazy if you think I care this much about you or these videos. So then he just deletes them and she watches him delete them and then they go home. So of course, this is no longer his girlfriend. They're done. So I broke that relationship up and I greatly inconvenienced him on a Saturday. And on a side too, you know, this guy also has these nut ass sunglasses that he always wears. He left the sunglasses in the car and then they ran the... They ran the sunglasses over with the car. And look, bro, chat, there is so much video proof that I could give you guys, but the cousin is just being Hollywood. I'm trying to get her to send me the footage, and she's just leaving me on the liver. I know they're half swiping me. But look, after this, it was my main event. I got fraud. Now, look, we're going to have to do another part. You could just go to the YouTube, and everything will be there. Or you could just keep going through the parts on the account, whatever you want. But yeah, I love y'all, man. I really appreciate the support that y'all been giving me, man, for real. Now, look, we got part four of the Civil War. Now, this part is strictly about me. On the last part, we talked about what I did to Alex. But Alex got his get back in the worst way. So during this Civil War, I'm also romantically involved with a girl at the time. And Alex tried to use her a couple of times. He tried to make me look bad. But look, I'm a solid guy. I stay loyal. I play my role. You know, I do what needs to be done. And I also let her know to not believe anything that this guy does because he's an idiot. So me and my girl, we're solid. So he realizes he's not going to be able to affect me by making my girl turn on me. So he did something to make me turn against my girl. Man, I mean, this, this was bad. Now look, this girl that I'm talking to, she used to talk to my friend Alec. Like, they had this little group chat, you know, it was, it was a lot of stuff. It was a whole bunch of nonsense. So during this time, me and my girl, we're going through a little rough patch, all right? So we're not really talking too much. So during this time, I guess they were trying to, like, revive their group chat or whatever. So my girl, she had a cousin who was a part of this group. And it's just one of those things where it's like she wanted to relive the nostalgia of their old group chat because they had it when they were younger. So they just start going back to these group calls. And somehow, some way, in this group call, they just started sharing their my eyes only. Now look, everybody else in this group, their my eyes only doesn't really consist of them. Like for men, I don't think there's too many men that just got their dick slinging in their my eyes only, you feel me? And her cousin, she don't really got too much in there either. But my girl, her my eyes only is ridiculous. So they're trying to get her to screen share and she is refusing. She is not going for it. So I'm gonna explain to you guys what the situation actually was first and then I'm gonna explain to you how my man's flipped it to manipulate me and destroy me. I'm not gonna lie. She definitely was bugging. She should have never screen shared this in the first place. She's still weird for that. But she screen shared it for the littlest amount of time possible. But look, my mans was getting ready for the screen share. So he was screen recording. He went into the screen recording and he paused it at the exact frame where you could see the eyes only. And you feel me? She taking pictures like these. You feel me? Yetis out. Panties on. You know what I'm saying? Mad legs showing. So after he does that, he's keeping shit player, all right? He's not letting nobody know that he did this. So after the group call ends, he calls her separately. Now this guy's just chatting nonsense, you know what I'm saying? Just chatting nonsense. It's like midnight, you feel me? Now this call was just used for him to screenshot and show that he was on a call with my girl late at night. So he ends up hanging up, all right? So I'm asleep during this time. So this guy sends me a message. He says, yo, bro, this ain't got nothing to do with the war or nothing. I'm just trying to look out for you, bro. Your girl's wildin'. He sends a picture of the Maz only, and then he sends a screenshot of him being on the phone with her late at night. So look, I wake up for school in the morning, and there is not a lot of times I wake up happy in the morning because I got to go right to school. But for whatever reason, bro, I woke up with mad energy. I woke up pretty happy, and I wasn't looking at my phone. Usually, I look at my phone as soon as I wake up, but for some reason, I didn't. So I'm just getting ready. I'm getting ready, and I finally go on my phone, and I look at him. I see that he texted me. Now, I look at the image, and my heart dropped. Like, all war, everything aside, really think about what I'm seeing. There is no reasonable explanation as to how this possibly could have happened. So I'm not thinking this guy's manipulating me. I'm thinking, wow, this really just happened. And this shit gonna sound mad dramatic, but I swear to you, one singular tear rolled down my eyes as I'm just staring blankly into my phone. So I text my girl. I'm like, I know what you did. And then I just block her right then and there. Now I'm gonna go over the aftermath in the next part, all right? We got part five of the Civil War, man. So on the last part, we talked about how I got a nuke dropped on me, okay? And man, Alex played this perfectly. My girl did bad and slipped up. He took this slip up and manipulated it into something egregious. So look, after this, bro, I'm having a rough day, man. I go to school, man. I got perma two AirPods in. I'm not talking to nobody. I'm not listening in class. I'm not doing nothing. Just staring in the space like this.
So look, my girl blowing up my phone now, asking me, what am I talking about? What did I do? I didn't do anything. Obviously, I told y'all she's blocked. She's texting me on the text now number, calling me no caller ID, you know, all that. So I just sent her the picture of the, my eyes only, and I just keep it pushing. Now look, for the next four days, I was stuck in an infinite loop of just sadness. Like it really felt like there was a hole in my heart. Look, my man saw what this was doing to me. So he told me what it was. He's like, yeah, bro, like you got done terrible. I'm agreeing with him. I'm like, this was a master plan. Like you actually had me hurting. I wasn't mad or nothing. Like I was just like, I had to, I had to give him his props. Like we said, anything goes. So after this event, we decided to call a truce and we formally ended the civil war. You know, it was a lot of damage being done, feelings being hurt. You know what I'm saying? It was getting real bad. And it's like, we're starting to get older, you know? Like, we're about to be grown men at the time. So it's like, you know, we shouldn't be doing shit like this at our grown age, you feel me? Now, this happened damn near two years ago. But look, we got into a war a couple months ago. That's where these text messages come in. Easily a top three day. Now I said, Civil War chat. Definitely top three. My man said, you got it. I said, flip the script on niggas. Shit was funny till it wasn't. Now this is the clip that I showed y'all at the beginning of this story time. So now I'm gonna get y'all to run down on what led up to this. So look, me and my mans be hooping with each other a lot. You know, running ones and shit. But look, I am not a hooper. I'm a guy who plays and enjoys basketball, but I'm not that good at it because I never played growing up. I just started recently getting into basketball like two, three years ago. But my mans, he been hooping for a while. Like he do this hooping shit, you feel me? So we made a bet. I start at 10 and he starts at zero. And if he can 11, 10 me, then he wins. But if I score one point, he loses. Now look, I am not disgustingly bad at basketball. So I knew that I was not gonna lose. So I played him one time. I, we go double or nothing, I win. Triple or nothing, I win. Like you really have to be horrible, awful for somebody to beat you 11, 10 when you are at 10 points. Like you could do anything, any stupid little thing, like just throw the ball up and hope it goes in. And you just have to do that once, just make it once. So of course I didn't lose. So he owes me about 200, right? But I just let it rock. So we end up hooping again. And I don't know why I would bet with this guy when he already owes me 200. But now we're just doing 1v1s to three, all right? Now look, he would win some, I would win some, and then we would just keep betting. Like, let's say we put 20 on one match. He wins and I'm like, all right, run it back, run it back. Then I win, so then it goes back to zero and I'd win again and he wants to run it back and then he beat me and it goes back to zero and we're literally doing this for like three hours and these games are ridiculous like we're fouling the hell out of each other we're calling ridiculous fouls we're just we keep on shooting for the ball at first it was just fun and games but now I'm actually getting mad because I have to go to work after this so we start doing one point games whoever scores once wins and it's the same thing as before we're just fouling each other calling fouls doing whatever all right now towards the end of this I take the lead all right and he owes me money so we're playing double or nothing i'm playing to double my 20 to 40 and he's playing to take my 20 down back to zero and i kid you not i beat this guy three times and every single time he called a nonsense travel i did not travel so on the third time when he called the third travel i'm like all right i'm out of here i'm like you're a dickhead like i'm not taking your stupid ass home because i'm the one who drove him there i got the car he does not have no means of transportation so i take off my basketball shoes i slip my crocs on get my keys get my backpack and all that and i just sprint right out the basketball court but look my bag's a little heavy i'm moving unorthodox because of all the shit i'm carrying so i'm moving mad slow so he ends up catching up to me now i'm trying to pull a maneuver to get in the driver's seat without having him open the door to the passenger seat but it would be impossible for me to get all of my stuff in the car and then get myself in the car without him getting in there too this guy has his hand stuck to the door bro so eventually i tried to make the calculations but like it did not work now this is in the summer so it's like 80 degrees outside right so i'm like i bet like if this guy's gonna get in the car with me i don't care like i'm turning the heat all the way up so i got the windows up and i had the heat blasting on 90 degrees and i'm telling him i'm like yo bro you're not getting home today i will not take you home then he just starts messing with me he's pretending like he's about to turn my car off while i'm driving he's reaching for the push to start button he's turning the air conditioning on and then i'm just turning the heat right back up so now we're having a war between the ac and the heat he's grabbing my gear shifter while i'm driving just pretending like he's about to do dumb shit and he's just recording me camera in my face just being annoying and i'm pissed because this guy owes me money and now he's trying to get a ride off of me i'm not going for none of it so like i told you i have to go to work so i was not about to have this guy just sitting outside my house doing dumb shit so what i go do is i park my car into a local pizza place that's by my crib i leave the car there i take 
take my keys with me, and then I just run to my house from there. This is why in this picture you see that he has pizza. So I go shower, I go do all that, get my work clothes on, and I'm ready. I come back, and he's still there. He's just eating some pizza and drinking some water, looking like a dickhead. I'm pissed. So real quick, I got to explain to you guys what I do for my job. So for my job, I take care of people with disabilities. These people are in group homes, so I go to the group home, and then I just take care of them there. So I'm telling this guy, I'm like, yo, you are not getting home. I told him, you might as well just walk to your crib from here because I am not taking you home. I'm going to work. Now, this guy's making threats. He's like, bro, you might as well just take me home because I'm going to get you fired. He's just saying he's about to be doing nut shit outside the crib, just making sure that something happens to me so I lose my job. So look, I'm just calling this bluff because I don't give a damn. My ego will not let me take this guy home. I cannot. This guy owes me money. He's been tormenting me while I'm driving. Just for him to still get a ride home for me, hell no, I don't care. I'm going to inconvenience you as much as I can. So look, this ended up working perfectly, man. And this is why I say the Civil War came back because this was Civil War level activities of manipulation. But it wasn't all manipulation. I low-key got lucky. So look, now I'm driving to my job, all right? So the area that I'm working in is not an area that I'm usually at. It's like this little house complex, all right? So there's mad houses all over the place. So look, I get over there and I'm looking for the apartment that I'm supposed to be at. And look, I knocked on the wrong apartment, but I didn't know I knocked on the wrong apartment. But when I knock on this apartment door, bro, a dog ran up to the door. Now, look, I'm allergic to dogs, and I'm kind of afraid of them, too. So I'll go back to my car, and I tell them, I'm like, yo, this guy got a dog in his crib. So they tell me the house I'm supposed to be at does not have a dog. But they also said that I'm not even supposed to be there. I guess they forgot to tell me they wanted me to go to a different house after telling me to go to that house. So once this happens, I'm like, okay, this is great. Because if I had to stay at that house, that would have been bad. So the house that I'm supposed to be at, it's not a complex. It's just a regular house. So I know I cannot bring this guy there. Because if he goes through with what he says he's going to do, it's over. So I tell him, I'm like, yo, bro, I'm going to just get you the Uber home. I don't got time for your games. I'm just done with this shit. But you know me, man. I'm always plying. So I order this guy an Uber, all right? Now, he thinks I'm pump faking with the Uber. So he waits in my car until the Uber actually gets there. So instead of Ubering this guy home, I got him a $6 Uber that took him around the block. Now, look, at the time, this guy had no bread. So we couldn't get his own Uber. And he was so busy recording me the entire time I was driving that his phone was on his last legs. It went beautifully. Like, it was so satisfying to violate him the way I did. After owing me money, after trolling me while I was driving, all of that shit, I got the last laugh. This nigga was stranded. He called me and I laughed hard as shit in his face. That was one of the hardest laughs I had in my entire life. It felt so good. Now, look, after that stunt, I thought the Civil War was about to be back in full effect. But instead of going back to a Civil War, we just fought. And then it ended there. But yeah, that is the conclusion of the entire Civil War arc. There was that little thing we had going on at the original start of the Civil War. And then the Civil War almost came back in full effect. I hope y'all enjoyed the entire series, man. You know, if you watched every single part of it, I really appreciate you. I still got a lot of story times in the vault for y'all. So make sure you guys are just ready for everything.